What's going on guys? Welcome back to another After Effects tutorial. My name is Colin Ross. Today we're taking a look at the bottle transition from Amir Zachary's new POV edit. Let's take a look and then jump in After Effects and learn how I did it. So if you take a look here, you can see what we're working with today. Uh, we have Charlie lifting up a bottle. It contains a shot here from the coach. She holds it up to the screen and we zoom in. But let's exit out of this and start a new composition and see how I accomplish these effects. We're gonna start by dragging our footage into a new composition down here and we're gonna drag through to the point where we wanna start. I'm just gonna start from like right here to make the tutorial a little bit more simple. I'm gonna hit B on my keyboard to trim that up. I'm gonna hit N, I'm gonna right click on this gray area right here and trim the composition to work area. Now you have a composition that has all the attributes that your original footage has and is trimmed up to your likings. This isn't a ridiculously complicated effect but one of the first things we have to do like always is we have to do some 3d motion tracking and to do this since we're doing an object motion track We could do the traditional tracker in after effects But we might as well use mocha because it's gonna be a lot easier and it's something that mocha is going to do well at with a shipwrecks clip Highlighted we're gonna click animation. We're gonna click track in mocha AE It's gonna open up a separate program that comes with after effects for free if you have the Adobe creative cloud It's gonna create a project that matches up with your footage. Just hit okay there We're gonna draw out an X spline tool that is in the shape of the bottle so that mocha is going to track the bottle and it should do a pretty good job at this I'm just gonna draw an outline of the bottle here right click to in the spline and then I'm just gonna hit track forwards here so it got a little messed up here but we can fix this in After Effects go ahead and click export tracking data make sure that After Effects transform data is selected click copy to clipboard and then go into After Effects right click create a new null object with your null object selected hit control V and paste that tracking information into your scene. If we play this forward, it's doing a very good job at tracking our image. It slips up a little here in the beginning. It just goes down slightly, but it still looks really good. And Mocha did a really good job at tracking this. To kind of fix this, I'm gonna highlight our null object. I'm gonna go in, and you can see in the first couple frames it starts to slide down just a wee bit. So I'm just gonna go through to these frames and drag it down slightly so that it matches a little bit better. You should be looking good if it looks like your null object is actually tracking to the scene here, if you can scrub through real quick. So then just drag on the next clip or the scene that you're trying to reveal to. For me, it is this scene right here, and the frame that I want to be frozen is actually the first frame, but if that's not the case, it's also a little bigger, so I'm gonna scale this down. And I'm gonna make this a 3D layer, and then I'm gonna kinda move this so it kinda is oriented at the bottle position. So I'm going to hit T on my keyboard and change the opacity of this to around 50% and then I'm gonna mask around the outline of the bottle. Hit V on your keyboard and then scale down. I'm trying to maximize the amount, maximize the amount that can be in the frame. So I'm gonna drag it somewhere around to like there, maybe rotate it a slight so it's at the angle of the bottle. Mask out the outline of the bottle like it would be like kind of like a liquid in the bottle. Um, just like that. hit F on your keyboard and you want to feather that maybe like 20 pixels just so it blends more naturally with the scene. When it's on whatever frame you kind of position it on, go ahead and drag the parenting pick whip to the null nine. I also forgot um, when you're on that first frame or frame that you're frozen, you want to right click time freeze frame and this is going to turn it into a picture so that nothing else plays besides the timestamp where you chose it to freeze frame. Hit the drop down and then hit the drop down for transform. And then just add a keyframe for all these keyframes on the first. Go forward to there, it kind of drops down. Hit W key and you can kind of rotate it and then also kind of scale it up a little bit more and then kind of position it in place. I'm also gonna hit M on my keyboard. Just hit a stopwatch for the mask path as well. So if you need to make any adjustments there, they will save. Hit U on your keyboard so you can see all the keyframes that you are going to need to make changes to. And we're just gonna go through and kind of refine this out a little bit. Um, I'm gonna maybe expand this mask out a little bit right here. Boom, maybe it moves a little bit. The motion track from Mocha isn't gonna be perfect, so you kinda have to do a little bit of finagling. But as you can see, I got the track looking pretty solid. It also looks a lot more natural if you do set the opacity of this layer to like 50, because when you set it to 100, it's just, it obviously doesn't look realistic. And maybe you want something more like 75, 25, maybe it's a little light. So somewhere around 50, I'm also gonna delete the keyframes for this. Somewhere around 50 looks pretty natural. What we're gonna do to make this look more realistic and make it look like it's actually inside the bottle is we're going to duplicate our base layer footage, the shipwrecks layer, bring this to the top. We're also gonna duplicate our image in a bottle and then we're gonna bring this on top of the shipwrecks layer. We're gonna turn that off, turn the shipwrecks layer back on, toggle switch modes till you see track mat options. We're gonna change the track mat for the shipwrecks layer 
to be alpha matte Nepali. This is going to take the alpha or the outline of this and apply it to this layer and make it so that alpha shines through. Now you can see that's being brung back on top of this image. What we can do to make this look more realistic is change the blending mode to overlay. It's going to bring in more of those like water reflections from the bottle. It makes it look a lot more like um, it's a part of your scene. You can also mess around with a lot of these blending modes and kind of find something that you like. I found that overlay looks pretty dang good. And then with that overlay on top, you can maybe bump up this layer to maybe or like 60 you can bump it up a little higher since there's actually kind of like a reflection layer on top if we preview that now it's looking pretty realistic the only thing we really have to do from here is zoom into this bottle I didn't really take a complicated approach to that I just did a basic zoom now you just have to pick the point in your scene you want to zoom in I'm gonna say maybe like right here I'm gonna parent null 9 to our base layer then I'm gonna parent our alpha mat which isn't parented to the null also to our base layer and this is gonna make it so if I hit scale and I zoom in everything is gonna scale together so I'm gonna go to the point where I want to zoom in I'm gonna hit a keyframe for scale hit P on your keyboard also set a keyframe for the position hit you bring them up for both and then move forward maybe like five or ten frames and then you just want to zoom in to where your whole scene covers the image just like that want to rotate it probably a little bit and then position it just like that maybe zoom in a little bit more <clears throat> and you actually want to zoom kind of further in like that and then position it a few keyframes farther. The first frame before this completely covers the scene, we're gonna hit T on your keyboard, set a keyframe for the opacity, hit U so you can see all the keyframes, and then go forward a few more, set the opacity to zero. We also, on those same keyframes, we want to set a keyframe for the opacity um, of our bottle layer, set this down to zero as well, and then also do this for our overlay layer, T, keyframe, last keyframe, 0%. Now everything just kind of fades away just like that. We want to extend our composition. I'm going to click in our composition, composition, composition settings. I'm going to extend this out to maybe like five seconds. I'm going to zoom out here. I'm going to drag back on our clip of the coast. I'm also going to drag this below everything so that when the opacity fades away, this is the layer that's underneath everything. All right, I'm going to adjust these keyframes so they only last for two frames because four is kind of a lot. So if you select all the opacity keyframes we set for the layers and you hit shift, you can select them all and then we're just going to move them back a couple frames. What we want to do now is right here in this middle when it's 50%, we want to move the layer that we brought in and kind of position it so it matches up with this layer and we might have to scale this um, and move it so it looks kind of like that. Then we're going to hit P on our keyboard, set a keyframe for that, hit scale, also set a keyframe for the scale. Over the course of the next like four or five frames, we're going to scale and position it back to be like at 100 to where it fits in the shot. I'm also going to set these keyframes to be easy ease so it kind of blends a lot more naturally. So now if we preview this we can kind of see the final effect taking place here. Charlie holds up the bottle, it kind of zooshes in for this brief second when the opacity fades away. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move the position and scale um, of this shot of Amir kind of getting knocked back. I'm going to move it to like here so it's not as jerky when it zooms out to kind of polish this off we want to add motion blur to all the layers that are moving make sure it's also enabled for the composition as well and I'm also going to enable it for the overlay layer for the actual shot of the bottle every layer that is on just turn on motion blur this is going to take longer to render but it's going to blend in everything and make it look a lot more realistic and um, it's going to blend everything together a lot more naturally we're also going to add one more effect this is kind of always the polish off effect I'm going to add a new adjustment layer and then on that adjustment layer, I'm going to go into the effects and presets tab and type in optics compensation. I'm going to drag this on the adjustment layer. Right here, when it starts to zoom in, I'm going to hit a keyframe for the field of view. I'm going to reverse the lens distortion. I'm going to hit U so I can see the keyframe. Right as the opacity starts to fade in, I'm going to bump this way up to something kind of insane, something maybe like 135. And then as it zooms out, just drop it back down to zero. Like I was kind of talking about earlier, what kind of helps sell this effect is how Amir kind of drags his hands and kind of, he sells the effect physically by kind of reacting he was sucked out of, or sucked into the bottle. That helps sell the effect when you kind of show a physical reaction to um, your transitions. Just, just a little pro tip there. But that is the tutorial. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, leave me a like. If you didn't, leave me a dislike and tell me how I can improve my teaching methods in the future. And as always, leave me a comment if you have any additional questions if I didn't go over something. If you just have any additional questions, just comment down below. I respond to every single comment. Don't forget, every day counts. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace, bye, peace, peace.